You might have heard that the sports card market has started this year hot. But what about each individual sport? And more importantly, where is the market going to go from here? We're going to dive into the data now. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to Data Dive. Teapot is on the road today, so I'm filling in for him, and I thought that it would be fun to take a deep look at what is happening in the sports card market, and more importantly, where it's going to go from here. Because if you've talked to anybody in the sports card business, you probably have heard that 2024 so far has been a good year for sports cards. The value of many sports cards has gone up. Sports card shows have been busy. There are more transactions taking place online than we've seen in previous months. It definitely is a hot market to start the year. But is this unexpected? And are things going to cool down? Or do things have a chance at getting hotter? And how's each sport looking compared to each other? Those are the questions that I have. And those are the questions that we're going to answer on this show right now. In order to do that, we're going to be heavily relying on market movers. And of course, I want to remind you that you can try market movers for free. There's a very special offer that TPOC gives on this show where you get an extended free trial plus 20% off if you use promo code DIVE when you sign up for market movers. So write that down. You're going to want to use promo code DIVE once you see some of this data that we have for you today. So the feature we're using in Market Movers today is Market Pulse. This is one of my favorite features for getting a sense of what the overall sports card market is looking like. And this first Market Pulse graph we brought up here is our new SCI 500 index for 2024. We actually recreated the SCI 500 index at the beginning of this year. We updated the cards that were part of it. Because some of the cards in the previous SEI 500 index had kind of fallen out of favor and other cards have come along that are cards that collectors more desire today. We're going to give the SEI 500 index an update every year, but when we do, we're going to give it a new name and we're going to keep preserving the old ones as well so that you can go back and compare historical data. But this is the 2024 version of the SCI 500 index, and it's got a lot of cards you might expect. A lot of, you know, historical cards like LeBron James, Topps Chrome Refractor from 2003, and Mickey Mantle's 1952 Topps, and Michael Jordan's 1986 Fleer. No surprise there. But we've also layered in some more modern cards as well. Like you may have noticed Joe Burrow's Color Blast from 2020 Prism. And as you go through the index, you're going to see quite a mix of, you know, older cards, as well as modern cards. You've got a little Luca downtown card there from 2018, for example, right beside Chipper Jones, 1991 Topps Tiffany card, or even a Bobby Orr card from 1966 Topps. The idea of this index is to try to get a sense of what's happening across all parts of the sports card market. Now, it is focused on prominent cards. And as a sports card investor, you're oftentimes better off investing in the most prominent, well-known cards of the greatest athletes. And that's what the SEI 500 index really captures. So if we look at it here, we're looking back over the course of about the last um, 40 days or so. We're going back just to the end of December here through the early part of February. And you can see that we've seen nice gains in, the, in this SEI 500 index uh, since the start of the year. Overall, it's up around 4% over the course of the last 40 days or so, definitely moving in the right direction. Now, if we want to look over a greater period of time, I'm going to go back to the SCI 500 index from 2023 because that one's got more historical data associated with it. And here it is. And here I've expanded the view of the 2023 SCI 500 index to be just over a year. We've gone back to January 1st of 2023 because one thing I wanted to look at was is this pattern that we see here of the rise that's occurred in cards since uh, the beginning of the year did this same pattern occur last January and the answer is yes in fact last January the rise was even a little bit more sharp we saw quite the rise last January January and by the way this is typical if you go back and look at previous years January is often a pretty hot month for sports cards and the reasons why you might have your own theory some people say that it's because 
people get money from Christmas and they start spending it. Others say that, well, they don't have to buy Christmas gifts anymore, so they, they can spend money on themselves. Some will cite to tax refunds and, and that type of thing, which happen obviously in the early part of the year. Whatever it is, January typically starts the year strong with the sports card market. Now, if we look back at last year, we can see that it really stayed strong in January and then it stayed pretty strong in February as well. It, it kind of plateaued, but the numbers were really, really good. That January rise and then the February plateau, those were strong months for the sports card market. Once we got into March, things cooled down a bit. April was a plateau month, and then we saw a drop in May down to June. But then as we went through June and as we went through July, leading up to the national, we saw a really good rise over the course of the summer. Unfortunately, once we got past the national, it was a whole lot of down. And in August and especially September and especially October and November, the sports card market dropped and it dropped pretty hard. Now that's actually similar to what had happened the year prior in 2022 as well. The sports card market is cyclical. You do see different patterns throughout the course of the year that tend to repeat themselves often year over year. But if you have that knowledge and you have that information, you can use that to your advantage because there's some very obvious periods to buy and some very obvious periods to sell when you look at these charts. But in order to know what to do with your cards, you've got to get a little bit more of a comprehensive view by sport because not every sport is the same. They all follow fairly different patterns. So let's take a look by sport right now. The first sport that I have us looking at here in Market Pulse is football. The reason why we're going to start with football, well, you know, obviously we got a, we got a big game tomorrow, right? And, and the game tomorrow constitutes the end of the football season. So what happens after that game ends? Well, we can look back to last year for some historical context. Because here I'm looking over the last 365 days of our football indexes in Market Pulse. And the two that I'm specifically looking at are our 2018 through 2020 football index. So that's going to capture guys like Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert and Jordan Love and uh, Jalen Hurts and Kyler Murray. And then I'm looking at our 2010 through 2017 football index, which is, of course, where you get Patrick Mahomes, as well as other players like Dak Prescott in that index. Jared Goff would be in that index as well. And so as we look at the graphs here over the course of the last 365 days, you're going to see something somewhat surprising. Unlike most sports, football does not take a big dip during the offseason. The Super Bowl last year was right about here, right at the beginning of the graph. And if you look at what happened after the Super Bowl, as we go through March, as we go through April, through the NFL draft in April, there really wasn't much of a dip. Football cards stayed relatively steady overall, even after the Super Bowl. Now that's surprising because once again, most sports dip when the season ends. The NFL is a little different. The NFL is the most popular sport in America. And I think when the season ends, everyone's immediately focused on the draft and that speculation around up and coming players and what moves teams might make to make themselves better the next year, big trades, all that kind of stuff that causes football prices to stay strong. So if you have football cards right now, don't feel like you need to rush out and sell them. You're gonna be good for a while. And in fact, if you look at the graph, you're pretty good on football cards all the way up until when next season starts. Surprisingly, the huge dip that occurred in football cards this past year occurred right after the season kicked off. Football cards were really, really strong through the spring and through the summer. In fact, leading up to the national over the course of the summer, we saw a nice rise and that rise continued right through the kickoff of the football season, which was right about where my mouse cursor was right in this area. But as soon as the football season kicked off, once we got about a week into the football season, we started seeing prices drop and prices drop pretty dramatically. They continued to drop all the way through around Christmas day, but then We've seen a very big rise in prices over the course of the last 30 to 45 days. Of course, there's a lot of renewed interest in football when you get into the playoffs and the price of guys who are performing well in the playoffs is helping lift the overall market. That combined with the fact that the sports card market in general just seems to do a little bit better in January 
has made this last 45 days really strong for football cards. So that's what you're looking at with football. My recommendation to you based on historical data is that you don't need to rush out and sell any of your cards right now. Maybe with the exception of the Super Bowl winner, if you happen to have their cards, maybe you cash in while they are particularly hot. The rest of the cards, you're probably gonna be okay on the price of those all the way through the start of next football season. All right, let's look at some other sports to see how their patterns play in here. Uh, the next sport that we are going to look at is baseball. So this is our baseball graphs here, and here we have baseball cards from 2018 through 2020, as well as 2010 through 2017. Now, of course, as you might expect, if you look most, you know, it, what's interesting when you look at these different um, charts and market movers from the same sport, oftentimes the lines are, are pretty close together. I mean, that's what we saw in football. This is, you know, 2018 uh, through 2020 football and 2010 through 2017 football, and they're generally following the same pattern. Where did they begin to separate a little bit? They began to separate a little bit late in the football season. The 2010 through 2017 cards took off beyond where the 2018 through 2020 cards took off. And probably a large part of that is Patrick Mahomes and the resurgence of the Chiefs here as we've gotten into the playoffs. Well, as we go back over to baseball here on the screen, um, you can see that there's only one point of separation between the 2018 through 2020 graphs and the 2010 through 2017 graphs. And that point of separation was really over the summer of 2023. Why is that? Well, the 2018, the 2018 through 2020 graph is largely fueled by Shohei Otani. And in fact, if you scroll down here, you can see that a lot of the cards in that 2018 through 2020 gra graph are in fact Shohei Otani cards. And his cards were absolutely unbelievably hot over the course of the summer last year as he was just doing amazing things from both the plate and from the mount. And of course, other cards in here include guys like Ronald Acuna Jr. and Julio Rodriguez. Um, player, you know, a lot of players that people are really excited about and, and had a lot of excitement about over the course of last season. But it was Shohei that really helped the two graphs separate. But what we're looking at here is just trying to get an overall sense of the pattern of the baseball market. And not surprisingly, if you look back to last year, you see from this point in time last year through opening day of the baseball season, through the early part of April, we saw a little bit of a rise. February and March and the first part of April tend to be good months for baseball cards. It's true with most sports that as you work towards opening day, excitement in the sports builds, some new releases start to come out as well. You're gonna to start to see, you know, Topps 2024 Series 1 Baseball come out, I believe next week, actually. I think that comes out this next week. I, well, I should know that because we're gonna be selling that here in Cards HQ. So yes, it does in fact come out, I believe this Thursday, we'll have it here in Cards HQ on release day. And so products are coming out, excitement's building for the season, and the charts are going up. People are paying more for baseball cards. They're starting to speculate on the guys who they think are going to do well during the season. We then see a little bit of a dip once the season's underway, kind of like football, where once the football season got underway, we saw a dip in most cards. It was a little bit less pronounced in baseball. And of course, the performance of Shohei Otani, particularly over the summer months, lifted the entire market back up again. Once we got into the baseball playoffs and players' seasons started ending and we got towards the World Series, you really saw prices drop and you saw prices bottom out. But then they started to pick back up again. Come about this, come, Once you started to get into about December, you actually started to see a rise in baseball card prices again. And that rise continued all the way through today. So if you're looking at the best time of year to buy baseball cards, Based on the data that we've seen over the last 365 days, it's really October and November. That's your best time to be picking up cards of the players who are not still, you know, fighting for a World Series title as of that moment in time. All the guys that have been eliminated from the playoffs, those are your months to buy because once the season officially ends and we get into December, prices start to rise. Whatever baseball cards you have in your collection currently, you can probably expect those baseball cards to do pretty well here over the next couple of months. 
All right, let's take a look at basketball. Basketball, unfortunately, has been just a kind of a bad story in the sports card hobby over the course of the last year. Basketball cards are down a lot. Basketball cards are down the most out of the major sports. And you can see by the graphs here on the screen, they're just playing down. Like there was a little bit of time when they were plateauing kind of in August and September of last year. But other than that, for the most part, they have been down. We've seen a little bit of upwards movement recently. January was actually pretty good for basketball cards. They did inch up a little bit. But the graphs overall don't show as much of a distinct pattern. They just show that they've gone down a lot overall over the course of the last year. And particularly if we look back to last year, there was definitely some downwards movement in March, April, and May. Now the two graphs we're looking at here are 2018 through 2020 basketball and 2010 through 2017 basketball. It was 2018 through 2020 basketball that had the most downwards movement by far. And if you look at the players that are in that index, well, it starts to make a little bit of sense. You know, Luca, the way that his season ended last year was a big disappointment. And he makes up a lot of this index. Ja Morant obviously has dealt with all kinds of issues, injuries, suspensions. LaMelo Ball dealing with injuries, dealt with that last year um, and was, you know, rather disappointing overall. Trey Young, the Atlanta Hawks, unfortunately, have been pretty down and, you know, falling short of expectations. Uh, you know, guys like Darius Garland, not as relevant today in the hobby as they perhaps used to be. And you see a lot of, you know, those types of players. Now, there are some bright spots too, guys like Anthony Edwards. Certainly his cards have done pretty well. Tyrese Halliburton, his cards have done pretty well. Shea Gilgis Alexander, uh, some of his cards are in this index as well. So there are some bright spots for sure. But for the most part, the 2018 through 2020 index We've seen a lot of downwards drop. I didn't even mention, by the way, Zion, who has a bunch of cards in the index. And certainly his absence may have accounted for some of this downwards trend as well on these graphs. So with basketball, I think our main hope is just that this year goes a little more smoothly. That we continue to see really good record-breaking performances. That players like Luka, that's having a, who is having a really, really good year right now, that he's able to stay healthy that he's able to compete for the MVP race. We don't, you know, things like what just happened to Embiid, where he obviously uh, had the meniscus issue and is going to be out for a while. That's not what we want to happen. If we want to see the graphs for basketball cards start to go back up again, we need a season where the top stars are healthy and the top stars are performing well and the, and the young stars are living up to the hype. And unfortunately, we have just not seen that the past few seasons. And that's one of the reasons why basketball cards in particular have been beat up more than most. Okay, guys, let's take a quick look at hockey cards. Let's see what's going on with the hockey card market. And you can see here that, you know, the hockey card market has had a, a you know, relatively uh, kind of stable pattern for the most part. They, they, dropped, uh, they dropped a bit over the course of last uh, May and June. Uh, actually, a decent drop during those months. Um, recently, we've seen a rise in hockey cards from 2010 through 2017, whereas hockey cards from 2018 through 2020 have gone the complete opposite direction. They've gone down a lot. This is a pretty extreme separation between these two graphs. So you've got the 27, you've got the uh, the graph line on the top is that 2010 through 2017 graph line where you've seen hockey cards from that era do really well during the month of January. And the graph line on the bottom is 2018 through 2020 hockey cards where you've seen cards from that era do really poorly during the month of January. And those two graphs really began to separate. You know, from 2018 through 2020, you've got guys like uh, Kale McCarr and Jack Hughes um, and Quinn Hughes, uh, whereas from 2010 through 2017, you, of course, have a lot of Connor McDavid and also Austin Matthews, who has been playing exceptionally well this season. Connor McDavid, of course, Edmonton was on a hot streak there for a while. So a pretty good reason why, you know, 2010 through 2017 would be going up as much as it was with the uh, performances of both Matthews and McDavid recently. Um, so that's the pattern we've seen. What's going to happen in hockey in the next couple of months? Well, if we look back to last year, it was relatively stable 
in the month of February. In March, you began to see a little bit of separation with the newer hockey cards dropping, a little bit of softness in April. Then in May and June is really when you started to see the drop downward. Will we see that same exact pattern this year? I don't know. But if you do have some hockey cards you're thinking about moving, maybe you move them before the playoffs uh, because last year the playoffs did not seem to play in the favor of many hockey cards when looking at the overall markets. All right, let's take a quick peek at soccer as well. So the soccer index, you can take a look here, 2018 through 2020 on the lower, uh, the lower bar and 2010 through 2017, the higher bar. 2010 through 2017 soccer has actually done quite well over the course of the last year compared to a lot of the sports card market. It was up for much of last year. It did finally dip down once you got into the fourth quarter. October, November, and December were down months for soccer cards, although it has picked back up a little bit. The 2010 through 2017 cards have picked back up a little bit here in January, whereas the 2018 through 2020 cards continue to remain pretty down. They continue to remain a little bit beat up. Hopefully we see a little bit of rise in interest renew in soccer this year. Of course, we are inching closer to the World Cup being here in America in 2026. So as we start seeing the qualifiers for that, and as we continue to work our way towards the World Cup, I do think you're gonna see some good years ahead for soccer cards. All right, we've talked this whole episode about modern cards. We've talked this whole episode about cards mainly from the past 14 years. But what about vintage? There's many vintage collectors out there. How have the vintage markets looked? We're gonna take a look at the vintage baseball market in particular. And I picked three different eras to look at. We've got baseball up here from 1909 through 1939. So basically your pre-war era. And then you've got 1940 through 1959 and 1960 through 1979 up here on the graph. So of these, the oldest cards have performed the best. And the cards from 1900 through 1939 over the course of the last 365 days, this index is close to even. It's down 1%, which is, which is one of the best performing indexes in all of sports cards over the last year. Because, you know, almost every sports card index went down during the year 2023. But baseball cards, pre-war baseball cards did well considering. The fact that they were almost even on the year is better than most. Baseball cards from 1940 through 1959 down about 14%. And baseball cards from 1960 through 1979, down a little bit over 17%. Overall, vintage fared better than a lot of ultra modern did over the course of the last year, but not even vintage is immune to the overall dropping sports card market because we did see the average price of the average vintage card drop during the year 2023. Um, what's interesting is we've not really seen as much of a rally with vintage cards here since the start of the year as we have with some ultra modern cards. If you look on the very right side of the graph, you can see we have gotten a little bit of a bump in pre-war cards, but cards from 1940 through 1959 and 1960 through 1979, they've continued to have some price decline the first part of this year, January and February. So while the overall sports card market has actually been rising quite a bit since the first of the year. It's not been vintage. Vintage has not been the part of the sports card market that has been on the rise. That's a little interesting. That's different than what we have seen in years past when it seemed like the vintage cards were the better performing cards over ultra modern. But so far this year, it's been ultra modern and modern that have picked up the market a little bit more. All right, guys, we, I, I know this is a long show so far, there's a whole bunch of additional indexes I could jump into. We could look at F1 cards, or we could look at golf cards, or we could look at vintage from other sports like basketball vintage or football vintage. But for those of you with market movers, I'm going to leave that up to you to do. Because if you have market movers, you can explore the market pulse feature as well as the graphs of 2.5 million cards and market movers whenever you want. And if you don't have market movers, you should get it right now. Go to sportscardinvestor.com, click market movers in the main menu bar and use promo code DIVE when signing up for a very special offer, an extended free trial period and 20% off. 
or you can get Market Movers on your phone. The promo code doesn't work there, but you can subscribe through the App Store. Just go to the App Store on your phone and search for Market Movers and you still get a seven day free trial when you download the app to your phone. I appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts on this video, what you're seeing out there in the sports card hobby and what these indexes look like to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time. Take care.